everyone, I'm here on our, and I'm live and I've been joined by my buddy over in America. It's Jamal Thomas from the Progressive Soapbox. How are you Jamal? How you doing? What's going on man? You doing all right? All right, let's just get your... Okay, speak again. I haven't got you. Okay, you doing all right? Yeah, I'm good, I'm, good, 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 good. I'm looking good. on the channel. I don't see it come up yet, but you might have a pull, uh, um, a, a, a delay. But I'm doing all right. Dark day. Dark, dark. Dark, yeah, dark yeah. Day. Now I've Ridiculous been saying dark day. I've been saying for the best part of a year, ever since the bit of January, that Corbyn is losing support in the north and the midlands of the country with his stance on Brexit. Now, for the last few weeks, I've sort of been campaigning um, uh, and really concentrating on on the NHS and how our NHS has been systematically sold off, etc. And Jeremy Corbyn's been putting that front and centre. And I think because of that, I got sort of wrapped up in it and sort of wrapped up in this envelope of the NHS. Oh, my God, they're sending off the NHS. And I could see anybody was talking about it. And I thought... People were going to put Brexit on the back burner and maybe, you know, realise that with the Conservatives, they're going to sell off the NHS. I thought maybe, maybe Corbyn, um, you know, I didn't think anybody would get a majority. I see what you mean. You thought it was just going to be a um, hung parliament. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a hung parliament. And um, to see this... It's almost like I'm fucking kicking myself now, buddy, because it's like all year <laughs> I've been saying he's lost this. So I was right all year long. And then it's come to the time I've gone, no, I think it'll be a hong Kong parliament. And, um... no, no, I never deviated on this. I, my, my reasoning, I don't live there. So I was looking at it from somewhat of a different perspective. And I, my thought was this election is going to be about Brexit. And I thought a few things were true. Boris Johnson was lying through his teeth about selling off the NHS. Of course he was going to do it. If you live in America, we pay twice as much as the rest of the world in healthcare, and you think those companies want to get a get rid of those, like from a Medicare for All system. But b, the moment that the UK comes out of the European Union, you will be a submissive partner, and as a submissive partner, those companies are going to be putting money into those politicians' pockets in order to get their hands on the NHS. Yeah. When Donald Trump was standing by Theresa May, go back look at that speech, and he yeah, says, he said everything everything's on the table. So NHS or Look, I think everything with the trade deal is on the table. When, you, when you're dealing in trade, everything's on the table. So NHS or anything else, or a lot, a lot more than that. But everything will be on the table, absolutely. Everything. In a trade yeah. deal, everything's yeah. on the table. Yeah. And he's right. He's right. Yeah. In a trade he's deal, right. everything's on the table. And the look what he's trade. Face. When he said it, by the way, he, this grin came over his face. He was happy. It was a moment of joy. Yes. We're going to get our hands on that. Well, so, somebody face. had a word with him, mate. Because that wasn't what he said the other day. The other no leader, good. it seems to me, would allow Britain to effectively sell the NHS as part of a trade deal. Would you, as the American president, see that as a deal breaker if none of the NHS was on the table? I don't see it being on the table. Somebody asked me a question today and I say everything's up for negotiation because everything is. But I don't see that being, that's something that I would not consider part of trade. That's not trade. You know, I try to tell people it's not so much that they're going to take out the NHS in one fell swoop. No, it's they've been doing it. Chip away. They don't have to do that. Just chip away. Just chip away. Just That's chip exactly away. what they've been doing, mate. For for decades, they've been doing it systematically ever since the 80s. With It's almost like it's like they've got a 30, 35-year plan and they're sticking to it rigorously. And well, anybody do. who gets in the way, <laughs> mate, the propaganda is off the scale. It is the same thing in the U.S., Social Security and Medicare. It's not about what's taking place in the media. It's what takes place over time as you attend to assiduously a very specific goal of undermining, undermining, undermining. And if there's a profit to be had out of it, get the profit and extract it out of it. Um, I, I see it the same way. I just look at it as we're your darker brother. It tends to be worse here than it is there, and it just kind of you know migrates. I, I thought, in, at least in my head, the election was going to either be about NHS or Brexit. And I thought Brexit was going to win that. And the only reason I thought that is because it's been three years. You guys have been inundated with this for three years. And I compare it to the inundation with Trump. Trump is every fucking where. And like it's, they talk about him constantly, nonstop. And after a while, you get sick of it. In your case, you have Brexit and you have a prime minister that got elected, by the way, from the standpoint of Tories. And the public, every time you looked at the polls, he would lose in parliament but he'd go up in the polls. And he's like, I'm the guy that's gonna get Brexit done. I'm the guy that's gonna get Brexit done. And it was funny when he kept losing, and yet you look at the polling, the polling was like, we're giving him the shot. Yeah. Do your thing. 
Like he he knew that when Boris Johnson, I keep saying when Boris Johnson was in that election with the other Tories, what did Jeremy Hunt say? You're going to end up in an election. Now I'm like, yes, he's going to end up in an election. He has the exact same parliament as Theresa May. He turns around and fires, delists all of these other Tories, meaning his majority was that much less. Mm -hmm. And then he starts complaining, oh, I don't want an election, but if you get, if you force me to have an election, nonsense. You've got to say, he's played a blinder, hasn't he? Yes. But, you yes. know, I've, I've called him stupid and what have you uh, on my show. I, 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 you know, I think he's a blundering, blithering idiot. I really do. But as a tactician, politically, yes. the guy is an absolute scorpion. I got to be honest, this has been utterly fascinating from the move and counter move. And, and in some weird degree, Jeremy Corbyn wrapped himself in knots. He took a position where he's like, I want you to have a referendum pointing to the prime minister. Now, that looks great from the standpoint of forcing the prime minister to put a bill up. But then when it becomes an election, well, you're stuck with that. You know, it's like you have to run with this notion that you are going to get a deal and then you're going to put your deal up for a referendum. And it's like. But wait a minute, you won the election. Why do you need to have a referendum? That's the referendum. The election is a referendum. That's why I said Labour's position didn't make sense. Labour is making this position yeah. of, if you elect us, we're going to have another referendum, another divisive referendum. Now, and, you, you, yeah. know the, you know the reason why he's out to take that position there? He was being pushed from people behind yeah. him that hated his guts. And this is, I mean, this is, this, this, it's something I said, I said um, um, to, to Joanne Lown the other day. Is that, um, I mean, if, if Corbyn did get in tonight, if, if he did win, somehow win and get, a, get in government, even if it was, you know, getting in with, with the SNP, then first thing tomorrow, he's in, a, he's in an untenable position straight away because he might have his opposition opposite him and, you know, his, his opposition are there and what have you in front of him. But yeah. behind him, that's where everybody, all his enemies are. They hate him. You know, and you then you've got... Boris you've, Johnson joke him. Boris and Johnson that, have joked him on more than one occasion. He was like, you know, these guys don't want you in office. They don't want you in office. And, and they don't. Right. He's right. And they don't. And uh, the reason they don't is because two-thirds of that Labour party, the Labour party were basically installed during the Tony Blair, Blair years. Yeah. You know, right. and, and they, they are not socialists. They no. Are, <laughs> They're not, but no stretch of imagination, are they? You know, and, and <laughs> Labour didn't become the biggest political party with political party membership in the in Europe by being centrist. You know, uh, they, they they became it because they supported Jeremy Corbyn and his vision, not yes. be, not because of what the Blairites wanted. Now he's 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 almost been backed into this corner, Jamal. But the problem that the, 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 there's something that I, I don't feel sorry for him at all. In fact, I'm absolutely furious with him, to be quite yeah. honest. Because for the last year, I have been saying to him, you've got to be firmer on Brexit. You've got to make the decision. You've got to stick to it. You can't just say, I'll go with what everybody decides. Because you're not a leader then. You're just a... Yeah, that's, that's completely untenable. I, it's so weak. It's so weak. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the weak. It's weak. It's iced tea. Like... You can't do that. Like you, I, I tried to make this point that the public came together and like it or not, had a referendum. And that public, direct democracy, by the way, direct. This is what we want. There's no static in the line. This is what we want. We want Brexit. Fair enough. Jeremy Corbyn's a Eurosceptic anyway. This should go fine. But that's not what happens. He eventually takes a position saying, yes, we will honor the referendum. How can you not? How can you not? Even if you weren't the party that didn't put it up. The public says we want this. And you turn around and says, fine, we're going to give you Brexit. It's going to be weak, but it's going to be Brexit nonetheless. And then it moves to, okay, now we're going to have a referendum. You've abandoned all of these people. And again, it's a philosophical point, right? If you have a country, supposedly that country is governed, or, or at the very least the, the, the discretion for that country to govern, the legitimacy of it is given by the public, by the people themselves. And the people say, we want X. And the elites in the country says, yeah, we don't want that. And because we don't want that, the social contract that we had, that we all kind of attended to, we're going to just say, fuck that. That's essentially what they've done though, isn't it? We don't care. Now, you put people in a difficult position now, because I may think Boris Johnson is going to rape us blind from the NHS. But now this philosophical point of you're ignoring public will, even if I voted to remain 
you're ignoring public will. How is it a tenable position for the government of a country that's supposed to get its legitimacy from the public to ignore that very public? And now those labor voters are stuck in a situation of, I don't even know if he wants to stay or go. I don't even know what he's going to do. It's like, I'm are not, you going to stay or go? I'm going to have a referendum. And that's yeah, just one issue. It makes no sense. And that's just the Brexit issue. Then you take the other issues that I have a problem with them as well. See, I've, I've, had, I've had this conversation with you. I've, I've had subscribers literally unsubscribe and, and, and suggest other people become cancel their patronage to me as well and you know it's almost like you want to see me go homeless what because you, had i attacked corbyn me too for me to bring this up because i try to bring it up in the sense that look i have no belief at all that boris johnson is a representative of freedom and democracy no, no, sorry. it's no he's allowed to take that position because labor abandoned the referendum and ultimately the referendum does boil down to some degree to democracy he takes that position. I'm the guy that's going to fight for so-and-so. Um, Boris Johnson just wants to do that to cut regulations to the bone. That's all. He's a conservative. That's all he wants to do. Cut regulations, give the money to the rich. He's a person of a particular class. Fair enough. But you've allowed him to take this position of freedom and democracy. Um, wow, this is what he's literally going to do. Okay. Then That's so weak. It's so weak. It's I know. Horrendous. And it's strange you say that because my, I said to my mum the other day, I, my mum's almost like my barometer of, of where, yeah. the, where, the, where, the, where the pendulum is swinging with regards to Corbyn. <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I, I went around and I, I asked her the other day, I did, it was about two weeks ago, and I asked her, I said, what do you, so what do you think of Corbyn? She said, he's a weak-kneed willy. <laughs> weak need really okay but it's not just the brexit thing all right and uh okay you know people can hate on me all i want for hating on corbyn you listen he's fucking lost get over it this is but, gonna but be this is gonna be a disaster though, shows that much more through brexit though. i mean look you are commissioned to do a job and part of that job is represent the interests of the public and the public has told you that they want to do something members of your party who hate your guts by the way don't want to do it is it for you to sit back and allow the members of your party to do something? Or is it for you to take a strong position on this Stand is Stand up and lead and, and be a leader. It, and hate it or hate it or not hate it. People know where you stand. Yeah. It's not like Corbyn is inauthentic. He is an authentic guy. The problem and what is have, and this is the thing, Jamal, whatever he does, they're going to oppose it. Whatever he does. Yeah. So why not do the thing that is popular that people want him to do. Why reach that. out to the right again? And this is my other, this is, I, uh, honestly, I've got a list, so you might be here a while. <laughs> this is just the, this is just the second thing. I was talking, I, I was uh, I was talking about this with my girlfriend the other day, and I was saying to her, saying how all of my life, all of my fucking life, Jamal, this left-wing Labour Party have been reaching out to the right. All of my life, they have been, it started in the 80s. Ever since I could remember, when I was seven, eight years old, I remember seeing Patrick. Neil Kinnock. Neil Patrick Kinnock, and I remember Reagan. seeing David Owen and David Steele and the break-off and the Gang of Four. And I remember looking at them, try, trying to explain it, you know, and wondering, why are they leaving? Oh, well, they're leaving because they might win with them. What? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. apparently, they, they, you know, they're thinking about going left. So instead of letting the country and the biggest the opposition country, uh, party in the country go left, basically what they're going to do is they're going to split the party, making sure that the, the left-wing party can never be in power, or certainly not for the next decades. Oh, right, OK. And then the 90s came. And it's like, right, OK, well, what happened was the Labour Party moved further to the right then. Yes, they did. With, well, with yeah. Tony Blair. So they've moved yeah. further to the right. They've moved now into neoliberal territory. We, they've moved now into centre-right territory. Tony Blair, he's obviously over on there on the neoliberal scale. He's centre-right now. And he, obviously Corbyn comes in. He comes in and he's, boom, all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, socialist left wing, we must stop him. And they're all yes. reaching out. And what does he do? From his point, which let's face it, Jamal, is if he was in Denmark or Sweden, he'd be, pretty much watery nonsense like he's yeah. not hardcore radical that people like me scream at him because he's not radical enough and i know i'm not the only person there are many millions of us in this country who feel the same way they're not yeah. uh, many of these people by the way checked out of voting for a long time because of this 
And what has he done? He's got in there, he's left-wing socialist, and the first thing he's done, instead of reaching out to people like me and said, you know what? I'm really one of you guys. Really, I want to fucking get rid of Trident. Really, I don't want this war. Really, I want to really invest it. All the things that you want. And I'm going to try and get your vote. No, instead, what does he do? The first thing he starts doing is reaching out to the right and starts saying when he can compromise and compromise. Ever inching his way further and further to the right. It's happened all of my life with every single Labour leader that has got in. They ignore the grassroots of their party and move further to the right of what their authoritarian masters want. And it sickens me. And I've seen him do it all year. That's the second point. And then the third point is the Chris Williamson thing. Yes, yes. He let that was unforgivable for me, mate. It was unforgivable. Back backing you, yes. You dropped the guy that's backing you. I, look, he said I more. He said more about Owen Jones getting roughed up outside of a pub and getting a bit of a graze on his back, roughed up by somebody, God knows what, for God knows whom. He said more about that than he has about Julian Assange. Just think about that. That's on top of the Chris Williamson stuff. Now, so for, for the people to the left of him, it was like, I don't give a fuck about your vote. I want the Blairites. That's almost what he was saying to me. And when I put that ticks, t- that, that cross in the Labour box this morning, I came home and felt dirty. Yeah. It's almost I, like I, I was forced and I had no fucking option but to put it there. I am, and that and made he, me sick. I, 